It's a maxillary tooth, upper jaw. A relic now, but can you imagine what it represents? A real animal, incredible, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. This is more than just an old fossil to me. It reminds me of something real, something powerful. Now this book, some people think it's just an old relic too. Tales and stories from another time and place. Not to me. This is written by someone who was actually there. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Right from the start in the book of Genesis, the Bible tells us about the origin of all things. Matter, light, earth, sun, moon, animals. Some people say that none of it is true. Well, that's not what I believe. I believe all of it is true. And everything I learn just keeps confirming how true it is, how true it always has been. The Bible even helps make sense of the hard things in this world. Things like pain, suffering, and death. These were not part of the original creation. When God created Adam, he didn't make him to be just an obedient puppet. Adam had the freedom to choose, to make his own decisions. But Adam chose to disobey God's rule, go his own way. That is called sin. With Adam's sin, the process of death had begun. As Adam sinned and died, so do we all. By one man, sin entered into the world and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Sin changed everything, severed our relationship with God, introduced pain, suffering, and death. And this sin affected all of humanity, you and me. We cannot on our own make things right with God. It doesn't matter how smart we are, how well we behave, how handsome we become. But thankfully, God had an eternal plan. He made a promise to a man named Abraham, a man who was in his 70s, had no children, that through his family, all people on earth would be blessed. The Lord brought Abraham forth and said, look now toward heaven and count the stars if you are able to number them. And he said to him, So shall your descendants be. Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Abraham's children became the Israelites, the chosen people of God. And about 500 years later, God chose another man, Moses, to lead his people and to teach them his laws and commandments. God said to Moses, I am that I am. Thus shall you say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. So through Moses, God revealed his law and the people's need for an unblemished sacrifice to atone for sin. So in obedience to God, the Israelites shed the blood of spotless lambs over and over again for the forgiveness of sins. We see now that their sacrifices symbolized what was to come in the Messiah, the one who would provide the ultimate and perfect sacrifice for the sin of the world. Then, just as the prophets foretold, the Messiah came to earth, was born of a young virgin named Mary, who already knew something about sacrifice. A sacrifice always had to be perfect. God required it.
I have memories as a little girl when my family would pick our best lamb from the flock. The priest took his knife and... <sighs> it always broke my heart. But my parents insisted that all of us were there. They wanted to make sure we each understood how terrible sin is. And just how much it costs to cover it. One day, after I was engaged to Joseph, I was visited by an angel of God. He told me not to be afraid, and that I was to give birth to a son, and that I should call him Jesus. I asked how this could be, since I was still a virgin. The angel told me the power of the Most High would overshadow me, and that my son would be called the Son of God. One day I learned my son would be called something else as well. A lamb. Jesus' life was everything the prophets foretold. He was born of the Virgin Mary, grew in knowledge and stature, and at about 30 years of age, he began his public ministry. Next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. During his ministry, Jesus healed the sick, restored sight to the blind, preached good news to the poor and told the people that the kingdom of God was at hand. But he was betrayed by one of his own disciples, Judas, and handed over to the Jewish and Roman authorities. and trained in Hierapolis. I worked for Caesar. I'm a Roman centurion, part of the most powerful army ever to walk the face of the earth. We were on assignment in Jerusalem during the festival the Jews called Passover. We had three crucifixions for the morning, nothing unusual. Two thieves and one religious rebel. King of the Jews, they called him. Me, I just do my job. We see crucifixion as a warning. It's not meant to be pretty. I guarantee you watch a man die like that, you won't want to cross Rome. He's hanging there. I hear him say, Father, forgive them. You don't know what they're doing. Who's he talking to? I'm looking around for his dad. And he yells out as loud as he can. Eh. Oh. It is finished. Like a... Like a receipt stamp, you know, paid in full. I'm thinking, what in the world is he talking about? Paid in full? And 
then that's it, he dies. It was like he, he chose to die right then. You know, most, most people last upon the cross for, for days sometimes. And then when we checked him, the whole hillside starts to rumble and shake. Pieces. He said the curtain in the Jewish temple tore right in half from the top to the bottom. I'm a soldier of Rome. I'm not afraid of anything. I tell you what, that day... I've never seen anything like it. This man was, truly, he, he was the Son of God. Look, we're all sinners. We've all rebelled against God. We're all worthy of death. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The good news, the gospel, is that the Lamb of God was given for our sins, yours and mine, to restore us to a right relationship with our Creator. Throughout history, God unfolded his plan, and it doesn't end with death at all. Not for Jesus, not for his people, not for his creation. The power and plan of God were demonstrated when Jesus conquered death. He rose from the dead. He didn't remain in the tomb. His resurrection was witnessed by over 500 people. He is not here. For he is risen. No longer is a perfect lamb an animal necessary, for God has provided the lamb, his own son, Jesus of Nazareth. In Adam we all die, but in Jesus we can find life and live forever with him in a new earth that God is preparing where there will be no more sin or suffering or death. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. In the Garden of Eden, the dawn of creation, God looked upon all he had made and said it was very good, perfect. But the first Adam polluted it, and because of him all things were broken. The world's still reeling from that first act of rebellion. But in the last Adam, Jesus, all things will be made new. The first Adam brought sin and death into the world. But the last Adam, Jesus Christ, brings life to the world. God offers us the opportunity to start over again, forgiven, spotless, and loved. That, my friends, is the essence of the gospel. The Bible makes it clear. God's gift of salvation is offered to us, not to just hear, not to just agree with, but to respond to let it change us and to share it with others. Repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. If you shall confess
confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved.